Hey everybody, this is Bermuda Brian, and I am here in North Georgia. It is October the 21st. We're going to try to do this in one shot. What I originally was going to do with this video, I had a bunch of different series and clips of videos I was going to put together about overseeding slash reseeding my backyard, but that thing turned into like a 30 minute epic video, and I knew nobody would stay tuned to that, I wouldn't. So. Um, I've chopped this up and I'm um, just going to get you guys the information that you probably want to know or that you want to watch. So why am I back here in the woods? Take a look around me. Well, this is what my backyard used to look like. Exactly like this. So this is what I started out with. Um, old trees, poor soil from drainage. I'm actually going to take you up to my um, fence line at the top of the yard and show you some water runoff issues that I had. Um, just a lot of stuff that I had that I, I had to overcome with this yard. So, um, this area I'm walking by right now, this is our fire pit area down here in our backyard. And I don't wanna show you the yard yet, so I'm gonna walk up here and what you see above me is one of the problems. It's this tree canopy that I've got um, that blocks out sunlight. Now. Um, I've tried three different phases of Bermuda back here and it just did not want to catch. Um, it would come in good for a few months and then it would gradually start to thin out. And so um, I did three different layers of that. Luckily the sod that I got was free so it didn't cost me anything but my labor. But um, no luck with that. So last year I came in and I threw some big box store Rebels grass seed down and it did okay. It wasn't like the premium seed that we all hear about. Um, that follow um, lawn and gardening. So I decided to do a total renovation. Now what had happened is that through this fence you'll see a slope that comes down right there. Water would come down this slope and would go through my backyard on down through and it washed off all of the topsoil that we had in the backyard here. We moved in about five years ago. House was already here. Um, so there was no backyard, no topsoil, it was hard to get anything to grow. So I started by working on a way to divert the water. And the water shoots to the outside of the fence line here. And then we had this sidewalk put in here. And we had this um, roof put on top of our deck. Now the reason why I'm telling you about having this construction done is because it tore up the backyard bad. And in the middle of all this, we decided to have a 100-year-old black oak taken down. And so by the time that all this construction was done and the tree was out, this yard was a mess. And so I decided to start over. So, and just like that, we changed where we were at. So I've got some notes here. Um, so I told you about the history of the backyard here. Um, there was nothing out here in this backyard, trees and stripped down um, soil down to red Georgia clay. Um, so what I decided to do, once that the tree was gone, construction was done, is I started treating the yard or the ground knowing that I was going to be planting grass. Um, so I put Humic 12, RGS, and Air 8, a few applications on it because of the compaction issues we had back here. Um, a lot of traffic on it with the construction in addition to it just being straight up red Georgia clay soil. Um, so I started with that. Had some weeds pop up because all the construction and the ground being disturbed. Um, so I did a round of tenacity and then I did a little research on tenacity and found out you can't just put one application down that you've got to do several for it to have its full effect. So I sprayed with the first application. Then when I seeded, I put um, down the uh, Scott starter fertilizer that has the um, generic form of tenacity in it. And then once I had some germination, then I came back there and I sprayed again um, a couple weeks later with another application of tenacity and it's worked really good. Um, I've got my seed from the Super Seed store, and the reason why I got it from there is I got a hold of Pete at GCI, told him about the issues that I had up here with all of this, um, all these trees and the shade. Now, I only get probably around five, six hours max of sunlight. Um, during the summer, I may get more than that. Um, Pete said he didn't have anything that would really help me out in that area, so I got a hold of the Seed Superstore. Um, they hooked me up with a uh, shade mixture, and that is what I use, and I strongly recommend them. This, this uh, grass seed came in really good for me. It's a hard area to grow anything in. Um, so what I started with is I, I went to a big box store, and I rented an aerator. 
Now, the mistake I made, and I'm going to tell you guys all about my mistakes here, but uh, the mistake I made was is that I didn't water the yard in good before I tried to aerate. So I brought that thing out here, and it was like breaking teeth with a jackhammer um, trying to get this ground to pull cores out of it. I was successful in some places, and you'll see other places where I wasn't successful at, and I had no benefit whatsoever from the grass seed. Um, so then after that, I came back through again, um, sprayed the Air 8, the RGS, and the Humic 12. Um, I put the grass seed out. Um, I'm going to stop right here and let you see the video of me getting the grass seed. All right, here we go. I just opened the box up, the box cutter. Let's see what all we got in here. Superstore spreader settings. That's awesome. It's a whole booklet of how to plant. Hey, you don't normally get something like that. Let's see here. How to plant. Super, uh, seed Superstore, SeedSuperstore.com, Mary at SeedSuperstore.com. Uh, to establish new lawn, follow these steps. To overseed, do this. And then there's that. What is this? This is my receipt. Is there any financial info on there? Nope. Okay. So there's that. And then here is the packet. Mm. Right there. 25 pounds of SS1002. That is their seed shade. Certified. What is this one? This one says sod quality. And this one says all the information here. Weeds, zero percent. That is what you want to see, boys and girls. So, this is it. Man, I've been planning for this moment for a while now. Overseeding the backyard today. Okay, so here it is. Just opened it up. I am going to actually be spreading this with a hand spreader back here, and you'll see why in a second. Here it is going in the hopper. This backyard is, this is 3,500 square feet, but it's kind of narrow. We've got a sidewalk going on this side here, and I'm standing on the sidewalk where I'm at. So it's narrow. And I just feel more comfortable. I won't have as much waste if I do it with this hand um, spreader. I like this hand spreader. So that's what we'll do here. Now, after I put the grass seed in the ground, um, or put it on the ground, then I put out some um, uh, peat moss. And I raked all that in. And uh, peat moss is a very, very dirty job. I'm going to show you a video here of the day that I put out some I'll uh, put the peat moss and mixed it in with the grass seed. Okay, y'all. You know, I told you that peat moss was dirty. Well, I'm done peat moss in the yard. And here I am. Got the hose. And here we go. That is some dirty stuff. Okay, so the, uh, the peat moss, the grass seed are down in the ground. The next thing I did is I sprayed some more RGS out uh, to get a good base. Um, I ordered uh, some Humichar from Anderson's. It's an expensive product. Uh, it's a good quality product. Like I said, the soil is in really bad condition back here. It's going to need a couple years worth of treating it to try to get the soil in a good condition. Uh, I forgot to say that I did bring in some sand and topsoil and raked uh, a mixture of sand and topsoil into the ground here uh, tr to try to get something that the grass could actually bite into and do well. Um, now I'm to the point where um, after the humichar, I waited a few weeks uh, with this and I started treating it with the Scott's winterizer to try to push the growth on it. Um, the winterizer has got 3204, I believe. And I'm going to spoon feed that in very small increments over the next three weeks to try to get the grass to grow. Um, I did have my initial cut on it uh, done, and I did that at four inches. Uh, but then I got thinking I want these blades to widen um, and to fill in. And to do that and pushing it with the nitrogen, then I went ahead and dropped that down to two and three quarters. 
Um, it, it, to me, it looks pretty good right now. Um, the things that I learned about this were uh, have been um, you can't treat fescue like you do Bermuda. Two different animals, two different beasts. Cool season, warm season. Um, what I was trying to do is I, um, in the past when I got that, um, I put down Rebels grass seed from the big box store. I um, tried to cut it at the same level that I was cutting my Bermuda out front. I was trying to feed it the same way I fed my Bermuda out front. Um, and I was trying to water it the same way. And so what I've learned is that they're totally different seasons. Um, I need to hit this thing with more potassium during the summer. I'm going to be hitting it with hydrotain. Um, and then I'm going to uh, make sure that the watering is done a little bit differently too. And during the summer and the hot months, I'm just going to let it go as far as the height. Um, I'm not going to cut it at all. Um, and then once that I reach September this next year, then I'll start cutting it and um, maintaining it again. But I don't want to really, down here in Georgia, especially with a fescue, I don't want to put any stress on this uh, while, it's, uh, while it's already in stress from drought and heat and everything else that comes with the summer months, which is totally different than Bermuda. So um, I'm going to put up some pictures of the different um, products that I put on this. I don't get paid anything. Matter of fact, I used to uh, tell all you guys is that I'm here to make your mistakes. Um, I'm just out here to see what does good, what does bad, what I could do better, um, or what I've done good. Um, so anyways, I'm going to show you guys pictures of the products that I did put on the yard um, back here that I did treat it with and that I will continue to treat it with. And so I'll do that now and then we'll go down and I'll show you the yard. Okay, so I wish that I had done this video two days ago. Um, I changed my direction of cut every time that I cut the yard and I did uh, diagonals on it uh, a few days ago and it striped up really, really good. Today, uh, the sun is behind some clouds right back here and uh, so you can't see the striping as good as you could the day that I did diagonals. Today I went up and down and back and forth, double cuts. But without further ado, here is my yard, my lawn. Now, I could sit here and I could put myself in a spot that is the best spot in the entire yard and tell you that I have done super great, that this thing is awesome. But I'm gonna show you what the real life view of this is. No, what do the kids do? Um, they change the way they look and stuff on the internet. This is how it really looks. So, Now, I've got some areas I'm gonna take you down here and we'll get, when I get done down here, I'm gonna take you up to the deck and that'll give you guys that drone type of view that you like. But I've got some areas like right over here. This is compaction. This is what I could not bust up with the aerator because I did not get the ground good and moist before I tried to pull plugs out of it. Same thing over here, okay? Now going up the hill, Right here is where I had that 100 year old black oak tree. And it is actually bluer, blue screen more than the rest of the yard. And I have no idea why, that's just the case. Now I will tell you guys something. A lot of these guys that call themselves experts on YouTube, they know no more than you and I. Now there's some guys out there that know a lot, but these other guys, I had a, this tree taken down and I had a question about should I leave the uh, wood shavings on the yard would that help um, put more organic matter into the soil and as they broke down it'd be good for the soil and he said oh yeah that'll be good for it i would just leave them there maybe rake them in don't do that it will burn your yard up and that's what it did to mine it is not good to leave wood chips on your yard or wood shavings or anything like that um, my guess i don't know if it was just too much nitrogen or something but it burned it up and that was even with me raking it in so that's my spiel about these guys that profess to be professionals on YouTube. Sometimes we're all in the same boat. But anyways, this is the area right here where the tree was at. This area up here, right through here, this used to be a path that went from up there, and it's almost where this tire line is right there, lawnmower tire line. It went straight down to my fire pit, and this was so heavily compacted. Here's one area right here that I'll end up having to overseed. But um, it was so heavily compacted, nothing would ever, ever, ever grow here. 
up here, even when I had Bermuda and it hit the sun a lot, I couldn't get anything to grow in this area. But it's coming in now. So, I know there's been a lot of controversy about Air 8 and Shumic 12 and those, but as far as I'm concerned, they work. Now, over here, I've got an issue with how much moisture that the ground holds. And if you guys are out there, if you want to give me any tips or advice, I've got to find a way that I can get this to dry out. Um, it needs to be watered, but when it does get watered, sometimes it holds too much. So that's a problem area that I have there. So this is the ground view. Now let's go up to what you guys would like to see when you watch these drone videos of yards and you'll get to see from up top. And this is really the telltale when you see it from above. Anybody can make a yard look good when you're down on the ground, I view. But there's where that tree was right there. And here it is. Now I'm going to tell you something else too. This yard striped a whole lot better when I was cutting it at four inches. It looked beautiful. But, like I said, I'm trying to get it to thicken up. So, what I, I did is by dropping it down to two and three quarters, I'm trying to get the blades to thicken up and trying to get the overall yard to uh, have a better appearance. And then this next year, I'll take it back up to four. I may go ahead and still during the fall, when the heat's not hitting, I may go ahead and continue to um, cut it at two and three quarters. But after that, no, it'll go back up. So, let me show you some other things here. This is the sidewalk that we had installed, and that helps out with the drainage a lot. I have some hidden French drains going down through here, um, and that helps with the water runoff. Over here, uh, let's see, right in this area, that's another French drain to keep my landscaping from uh, roots from getting flooded up under the ground right there. I did the same. We see these. Uh, we see, let's see here. We see these um, landscaping blocks going down through here, pavers. Underneath that is a French drain also. And then down there's our fire pit area right there. So, I know this video has gone on long. It's better than it would have been if I'd have pieced all this together. If you guys have any comments, any feedback, any advice, um, let me know. Put it in the comments section. Um, if you like it, what I've done, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Um, subscribe to me because I'll be doing follow-up videos on this through the whole um, fall. And then I'll start back up in the spring when I turn back into Bermuda, Brian. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And thanks for hanging out there with me.